Well, good morning. I'm back out on uh, Coniston Water, the third large, large lake in England today. Um, for those of you that may have watched it, I had a failed attempt to make Peel Island the other day out on this lot. Uh, out, sorry, out on this lake. I mean, basically, the waves were two to three foot white tipping, and it was winds of about 35 mile, mile an hour. And we're basically coming across south to west. Um, made it extremely difficult so uh, it's a bit calmer today although it's definitely going to rain so I've just got to put up with that got a rain jacket in the back and I just sort of soldier on so fingers crossed I'll make the south end of the island Peel Island and back safely so um yeah if you fancy coming along with me carry on watching the video Well, my launch point for those that are interested was Hof Waite campsite. Um, it's a National Trust campsite, which I've booked into for five days, uh, where I'm pitched up. I mean, you have to drive down to launch, but they've got the private beach area there, and it's got the Cum Cumbria Way uh, cutting through it, but it is their own beach area. So if you're staying at the site, you can launch there. You'll launch a kayak for free. free. If um, you were launching a powerboat, with a trailer there's a charge I don't, I don't know what the charge is I have no reason to look it up so I've not long put in and you'll probably see the put in area on the way back yes it's a murky old day indeed as you can see but uh, two things it's a bit calmer than it was two days ago with my failed attempt and it's good for filming because obviously bright sunshine paddling into the sun you don't actually get a lot of footage there's not a lot, a lot you can do when you're paddling you can't keep water in settings and muck it about with a camera you get what you get on the right further up you can just see uh, a jetty that's private a lot of this beach area along the right hand of this bank is um no excess for putting in or private there's just certain sections that are open to the public all right for those of you that are interested i'm paddling a blue wave glider it's a drop stitch kayak it's a 473 centimeter long kayak it's a twin but uh, i specifically bought it for kayak camping so i can obviously load it up and have uh, plenty of room for myself. Obviously load it up, I'll load it to the front and my paddle position will be at the rear. At the moment I'm off centre towards the back. From the centre it's very hard to control. So you really need to be just that smidgen back, further back and then load your gear to the front to try and counter a bit of your weight. I mean it handled admirably the other day considering with three foot waves and 35 mile an hour winds but it was not the weather to to be out here to be honest it was a little bit foolhardy a bit hopeful as I said we're paddling to the southern end or south end of the lock uh, lock lake and I'm actually aiming for a place called Peel Island which uh, also known as Wildcat Island from um, Swallows and Amazons. I'm not paddling hard, but I'm making a fair distance as you can see. I'm going relatively fast. It's just a steady stroke. This is a, an awesome kayak, or the kayaks of this design in drop stitch. They really do cut through the water, they, they do glide. As you can see, I'm going uh, relatively fast. And if I stop, even though I'm paddling into, it's not a brisk wind, but I'm paddling into the wind because the waves are coming towards me. If I stop, you probably hear the wind now. I am gliding on, whereas a lot of the um, more traditional large chambered kayaks will just grind to a halt more or less instantly 
and uh, start going backwards basically. I'm still gliding, I'm not paddling. Looks like a nice little campsite over there, very uh, quiet and peaceful. As I said earlier, the campsite I'm actually staying at is uh, Hofwaite National Trust campsite. It's, um, for me, absolutely suited. It ticks every box, basically. I mean, it's quiet. It's absolutely um, basic. They have a couple of showers, a couple of washing up sinks and toilets. Uh, other than that, it's very quiet. It's got very, very good views over Coniston Fells. Uh, and obviously, a kayak in put on put in point. The staff, the National Trust staff there that sort of come in, you know, different times during the day for cleaning, whatever, amazingly friendly. Uh, very, very laid back, very relaxed. I think I paid £12 a night. Uh, so if you're thinking of kayaking Coniston and you want a quiet life, I would strongly suggest Hayfweight. I do believe it's, it's quite a large area, but they only allow 60 They've only got 60 pitches, or they allow 60 people. So it's never going to be um, overcrowded. So, uh, yeah, basically, if you fancy a trip up to Coniston, getting out on the paddle, I would highly recommend it. Oh, we're making good speed here, good headway. The other day when I was out here, I thought it was mad. There was a few wild swimmers out here, and it was just... This scared the life out of me. I mean, I am a flat water paddler, in all fairness. I, I tend not to sort of, I don't see kayak normally on uh, rivers and canals, uh, generally non-tidal. But um, that was pretty scary to see these people out in the water. But it seems strange, because I mean, one of them I seen, he actually went past me and said, good morning. Um, he had a spotter on the bank, so I suppose there was some element of safety in what he was doing. I must say, I mean, I'm enjoying this. I was so disappointed the other day coming out. I mean, I've battled it, but uh, this, this is, this is a bit of me. This was my last opportunity to uh, get out on this lake. It was sort of quite important to me to give it one last crack. Um, I'm here till Saturday, it's Thursday today, but it, it's been torrential, it was torrential rain yesterday afternoon and all night, and I've got a big, What's well, that big? But I've got a four-person uh, air tent that I'm using as my sort of base here, and then just sort of going out from that. It's a bit more sort of luxury. But um, Saturday, I'm travelling on to Loch Lomond, and I'm while camping in my backpacking tent on the banks of Loch Lomond, and with the obviously the idea of getting out on the kayak, visiting some of the islands. Um, I'm at Loch Lomond for three days. And then I'm not too far from there. I'm packing up and I'm up to further into the Trossachs. I'm going to Loch Kong, spelt C H O N. And again, I'm wild camping in my backpacking tent. I'm right on the banks of that loch and I'm out on the paddle on that one. That one's very, very sheltered. It's quite a small loch, so it's generally quite safe to paddle. Obviously, if it's peeing down the rain, that's probably the only thing that'll stop me. I'm hoping to take in Loch Ard, which is only about two miles from there. Loch Venica, which is quite a large, much larger. And I must visit, whether I'll kayak, kayak it or not, Loch Lugnig, because that's the uh, resting place of my uh, late wife, bless her. So, uh, obviously, while I'm up here, I must, I must go and pay my respects and say hello. So that's my itinerary for the next nine days. I will be topping it all off with, I come from Scotland, and I come from that area. So I will be topping that off with visiting my brother. I'm hoping to visit my friends, George and Joe. Pop in for a cup of tea, maybe a shower. <laughs> take, take liberties. And uh, then on the way back down to Kent, I'll be stopping off for a couple of days with my son Chris, Lara and my grandson Jack for a couple of days and then that's me done for on the big trips for a month or so 
but I am planning on coming back up here in September. I'm not going to be doing much traveling during the school holidays. I don't like crowds, so uh, we shall come back up in September. Hoping to come up with a friend and do a bit of wild camping up here. The wind's picking up a bit now, and it's getting a little bit harder to paddle, but obviously there's method in my madness. At the moment, I'm paddling into the wind. So on the way back, I'm assisted by the wind. Probably hear it's picked up quite a lot now. I think the further south you go, the more exposed it is, and the windier it gets. I've heard if you go down the other end, the Coniston boat station end, it's a lot uh, calmer. Well, I'm out in the middle of the lake now, as you can probably see, and uh, very fast, fast being approached by some motorised vessel. So I'll turn around and see what it is. Well, on my left-hand side, I'm now being approached quite fast by the National Trust gondola that uh, takes passengers, tourists up and down the lake. And that can be uh, boarded down near Coniston. There's not many people out on the lake at the moment. I think um, maybe when I get up the far south end, there'll be a lot more people sort of playing around up there, you know, paddling around. And if I went down the far north, there'll be a lot of people just uh, paddling around down there. I think down on the north end is the only place you can actually hire kayaks. And I mean, this is five miles long, so I doubt that people are just day hirers, they're going to be trying to paddle 10 miles on a lake. I'm getting battered a bit now, but that's not uh, wind waves, that's from the gondola. And what I'm doing, I'm paddling completely into the wind, which is uh, coming at me from the southwest. So I'm hoping to use that traveling across the lake on the way back. For those that own drop stitch kayak of a similar design, which there's several, um, you may be interested to hear that I'm actually out here in the, with the skeg I recommend, which is the three and a half inch skeg, not the nine inch. I just don't seem to be able to get on with that. And uh, it's tracking really well. It's tracking in a straight line. Even though I've got that crosswind coming straight at me, it's not pushing the back around. Can you hear that noise now? The wind's really picking up. So are the waves. Saying that, this is nothing like I was putting up with the other day. Again, see I'm getting the weight from that craft battering me, but look, it's no problem. It just goes under it. And the great thing about these is that uh, being as the base feels so solid, it just literally goes under it. What I had um, with my Etwit 3, the traditional sidewalls, when I was on Lugnik, was um, I could feel all the ripples underneath the, the boat, it felt really, really strange. And there's no motorized craft on that, so there's no sort of uh, wake to put up with. So that was quite a battery. You may not look it in the film, but it's, uh, it just handles it. Okay, I've gone as far to the south side as I feel comfortable to be honest, the wind's really got picked up up this end, 
and the waves, you can probably see them going in front of me. So I'm going to start to pedal back towards my point. point. I'm going to keep to the right here because the wind is trying to blow me, blow me over to the left. So I'll uh, use the wind to slowly go over. Let's see what it's doing to me if I just stop paddling. Yeah, it's quite comfortably pushing me along, but it is. It's trying to turn me only slightly, so just uh, correct on the left pedal. I think to reach Peel Island, it'd have to be an absolutely perfectly calm day. Um, or simply put in down that end of the lake, and paddle across the, to it. It's, uh, I'm coming from about two and a half miles down the lake. It just gets more and more exposed as you come further up. <coughs> I'm not even paddling now, just. Uh, Correcting, I need to rest my arms anyway. I don't know if I mentioned on the other video, I've uh, pulled a muscle in my neck, so I uh, really did struggle the other day, and it's so painful later on that day. It's looking more and more like rain now. What I will do, I'll go back to my launch point and see how I feel. I may go a bit further down. I've got um, wets with me, I can cover up enough. So I may go down a little bit towards uh, Coniston as I didn't make Peel Island. I'll have to ask my friend online where he, uh, I know he's from up this way and he's kayaked to Peel Island. I'd ask him where he put in but I've got a feeling he would have put in down the south side or at least had a fair weather day which I haven't got. Me along. I think you can safely say over the past 18 months since I've owned this kayak it's, um, it's proved, proved it's worth and a lot of people knock the kayak the dropsticks kayak kayaks there's a lot of them on the market now um, but you know, I pedalled hard shells and then I went to a more traditional inflatable. And I wouldn't be out on this in it, in a traditional inflatable. It would not feel safe. What I have noticed, or I do find when I'm out on the uh, larger lakes, is how quickly the weather can change. You know, one minute just got very very light winds and the next minute you're looking at 15s 20s and 30s it's, it really can uh, change very quickly I think you just go have your wits about you a little bit use your common sense I think, uh, it's a beautiful lake I mean I wanted to do this last year, but obviously again, the COVID put paid to a lot of things. I'm sort of making up for it over the next two or three weeks, then I sort of settle down into some sort of routine of where I want to go on the pedal and where I want to hike. It just seems to be cramming everything into sort of 17 days at the moment. A bit too much, really. Now this is one of the things I like about being out on the water. Listen to this. Basically the sound of nothing, just, just the waves lipping and the wind. Makes me feel free. There's my put 
starting point in the distance. There's a little, uh, you see a little craft coming across on the left-hand side. Just past that, there's a red fishing boat. And I put in probably about 50 meters from there. Like I said, I may go past it. Try going a little bit further north. But as I'm out in the water, I'm enjoying myself. It's not raining yet, so. It's just really nice when the wind's dropped. So, like I said, you've still got the waves. It's very calming. It's so different to my river trips because I, I tend to sort of, uh, there's some very nice non-tidal and tidal rivers from Kent and East Sussex, bordering county. And uh, I do enjoy them because they're windy and there's, when you, you're sort of aiming the camera, there's always something to, to look at. You can imagine for the viewer of this, when you're out in the middle of a, a lake, it just all looks the same. Obviously not to me, I'm out on it. But uh, I do enjoy my my river paddles and you know, you've got the ducks and the kingfishers. And it's just completely different. And obviously easier. A little boat to the left, I believe, you can hire them. Coniston, the little electric boats. I can't remember how much they are, I think about 50 pound for morning or afternoon. Oh, it's a bit murky over Coniston. Old man of Coniston. I'm just uh, lazing around on the water at the moment. It's amazing, the wind's really dropped down this end, near where I put in, it just gets much worse the further south you go. So, uh, hello, come the birdies, geese. Yes, um, uh, le lesson learned. If I come up here again, I go down that end and Pop the kayak in there to go to Peel Island. The ducks and the geese. <sighs> How's that? Bit of fishing? Be a bad idea, would it? As you can see now at the bow, I've got a very large, I think that's a 60 litre dry bag pushed out of it. That's basically got 90% um, of my camera equipment in it. Got well, the camera equipment I would use out here, batteries, uh, things like that. And it actually weighs a bit. So as I said, because I'm sitting off centre to the back, what I've done is I've put that down there to try and counter my weight it counters it a bit it's not going to completely counter it obviously ideally you would think about sitting in the center but as I said I promise you you're, you're, you're going to lose control yeah? the further back near the uh, skeg you are the more control now if you're I'm topping up 14 stone at the moment I'm, I'm a stone heavier than I was last year if I sit right at the back the front is literally going to lift out the water uh, not good so you need to sit off center to the wall to the back and try and counter by putting some weight in the front. It's not gonna hurt, because obviously you're not, you're not, particularly, you're not carrying it. Um, it's obviously tethered down. Everything in here is tethered down on uh, bungee leads. So obviously if the boat does go over, that won't come out, that's wedged. But I've got another dry bag between my legs here, water, bits and bobs, sun cream, ha ha. Uh, 
uh, bug cream. Um, so, you know, everything's tense. So if the boat goes over, it will float. And I've just got the bilge pump on here, the whistle, the torch, it's all here. Phone, phone's waterproof anyway, that's in my pocket. So I can uh, call for help. So, yeah, as much as I'm out here having fun, I am uh, ready for anything that's sort of thrown at me. I'm not sure if you can make that out in front of us. As I row towards the shore, there's a, another kayak around. I'm not sure if that's his own or, like I said, you can hire him further north. It's definitely trying to rain now. It's a shame because it's so calm down this end. But, uh, really do we going further on? Yeah, I'm sort of more or less at my entrance and exit point. Hard one. Unfortunately, I can't run the camera when it's raining because uh, I'm using my external mic, so it's not actually waterproof at the moment. There's another cruiser trundling down here to the on the right. I don't know if it's coming to shot yet. I think I'd better get over. No, I'll stay to the right. I'll stay to his right. You don't really think about it because when you're on the river, you think, oh, I've got a red, a bright red kayak. It sort of sticks out like a sore thumb, but when you get out somewhere like this, you're so small. You, you certainly want, you know, bright yellows and bright blues and reds. You don't want to be camouflaged and tiny in the middle of a third last largest lake in England. Well, he's going at some knots, that's going to hit me. He's sticking quite close to the shoreline. I suppose it gives people the view and then he'll come down the other side. It's called Coniston Launch. Doesn't look like he's running with many on board. Just got to ride out his uh, wake. There we go. Three, two, one. There it hits. It gives you an idea how this kayak performs in waves. It rides them. How cool is that? Right, straight ahead, that is my actual put-in point, put-in and exit point. So uh, there you go. At least now, if you do fancy coming camping here for a few days or whatever and uh, kayaking, you know exactly where the launch point is for the National Trust campsite. Right. Let's go on a bit. So I'm going on a bit. Look at the mist over the hills. So we want to be up there today. Oh, time for a bit of a rest and uh, have a drop of water. Through the lockdown, um, I did get out a few times because I've got a local river, but you, you forget how much you miss this. <sighs> Onward. Right, I'm going a bit further down because it's, uh, it's only spitting.
right behind me is the forest. Apparently there's a really nice uh, campsite in there somewhere. So it's def definitely worth another visit to around this way. I've been out on Windermere a couple of years ago. But, uh, I prefer this. Maybe next time I'm up, I'll see if I can get out on uh, Oldswater. Okay, to the left, where I launched, and running right along that bank, is um, part of the Cumbria Way. Uh, when I was setting up the other day, it was uh, really, really friendly. I mean, I was just taking my time. I was down here at sort of like 8 a.m. And there was so many sort of walkers coming along, just having a chat, chatting about the kayak, just chatting about the walk. And most of them were on day two. But, um, yeah, that, that would be an interesting, interesting to look into as well. Doing the uh, Cumbria Way. now paddling north on the lake. I've gone past my put in an exit point and uh, I was gonna call it a day there because of the rain. It seems to be holding off and also I've noticed there's quite a few paddle boulders out on this section which obviously means it's a, a little bit calmer. So I thought no, nope, carry on. I've probably been on the water round about don't know what I've covered. Can't sort of gauge it. Not a lake, but um, I'll give it another half hour, hour, and call it a day. And it would have been a good day. Then I'm just going to relax, cook myself up a barbie, and have a few Stellas. Imagine in um, fair weather at the weekends, with this uh, lake could be an awful lot busier. But um, fortunately for me, most of my kayaking and hiking is done during the weekdays these days. But again, if I shut up for a moment, you just listen. Silence. Lovely. Well, there you go. We're down at uh, Coniston. A lovely array of uh, sort of yachts there. Quite a bit blowy down this end. Look at the mist. Look at those hills. Right, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn around and um, head back to my put-in point. I've got to ride these waves out. So this is what I was saying earlier, I'm being hit side on now. With just five, five inches between me and the waterline, it's just nothing. Nice to know your boat, what she's capable of. Right. Haven't got too far to go, but I'm back into the wind again now, as you can probably hear on the microphone. Here we go. Get a bit of speed up, David. Clear those old arms out. Someone asked how fast the blue wave glider can go. Here she goes. There goes the power strokes.
shouldn't be doing this in your mid sixties. <laughs> hey, let's go. Right, see how she glides into the wind. Stop. Up speed again. Now I've got no way of telling how fast I'm going. But I'll tell you something, it's fast enough. Whew. Well, that was my mad moment. I'm absolutely shattered. That was great. We got a wind hitting me around about say 15 mile an hour. It's actually after that mad little sprint into the wind. <laughs> it's quite welcoming. <sighs> well, I'm having a bit of a battle on the way back up. The wind's picked up, so I'm heading into the wind trying to get to my launch point. No worries, though. I'm uh, steadily getting there. You can hear the waves bashing me. The craft now. That's uh, probably got about a quarter mile to go. And I really, really think it's going to rain within about five or ten minutes. So, fingers crossed, just get out the water in time. And I hope there's someone out here on the traditional inflatable. It's like a medicine or something like that. Good luck to it. Yes, it was a medicine. I spoke to them as they came past me, asking them how they were doing it. They said not too bad. I mean, it's not too bad down this end. And obviously, they started off down at the uh, towards the north end, paddled into it. Now they're going back with the wind. So, but. Uh, feel a lot safer in this. Obviously plus I'm paddling solo as well, there's not two of me. I only got about 300 yards, there's a little wall on the right, I know it's not far past that so just can't see the uh, exit point as yet. Yes, getting tired now. Had enough. But it's been great, absolutely fantastic. I've really, really enjoyed this. I needed this after the disappointment of the other day and torrential rain yesterday. This is setting me up for my Scotland trip. Hopefully, fair enough weather to get out on the water as much as I, uh, as much as I can. I'll be back by two foot waves now. No problem, I'm just approaching my uh, exit point now. So, anyway, I'm going to leave the video there. Um, this is going to be a little bit of a long one, and I hope uh, if you've watched it all the way through that you've enjoyed it. I've tried to give people a little bit of an insight into what how this kayak performs as well, and uh, you know, my, my thoughts on it. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave the video there. So, if you've watched it right through and you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions in regarding kayaking, my channel, anything really, uh, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments below and I'll uh, endeavour to answer it, give you my honest opinion or, or whatever. So, that's it. Um, see you on the next one. Bye for now.